Hello everyone! As some of you may know, I had a small run-in with a creator called Theo about a year ago. An unintended consequence of this is that Theo has been lying about me for over a year to anyone who will listen. I swear I've seen him on Twitter where he's like, WHAT ARE YOU GUYS TALKING ABOUT?! IS THIS ABOUT HOW DARK FRAPPER AU IS AN ASSHOLE?! I CAN CONTRIBUTE! LET ME CONTRIBUTE ABOUT HOW MUCH OF AN ASSHOLE DARK FRAPPER AU IS! He lies not only about me personally, but why we had any involvement in the first place. Usually I ignore this, I'm just scrolling Twitter, I'm like, oh look, there's Theo again, shit talking me, uh, lying again, oh, great. Cool. I occasionally get DMs from his followers who are like, Hey, Theo's shit talking you again on your stream. I'm like, yeah, I know. What is he saying this time? Oh, look, all those things are also lies. Fantastic. I, in fact, just now got a message from someone where they showed me some footage from his live stream where he was lying again. As I somehow found myself in this theme of showcasing all these creators lying about me, I figured why not continue it? So in this video, I'm going to do two things. The first is to showcase why me and Theo interacted in the past. I would do this by showcasing a cut down version of my commentary back then. The second, I'm going to showcase the more recent footage of him still lying to this day so that I can properly debunk it. So let us now travel back to February 24th, 2023. Ah, a simpler time. So this company called Honeypot made this documentary. It took them, according to them, over a year. Funnily enough, it is about something called React. Now this has nothing to do with reaction content. It is some stuff related to coding. And so this guy Theo comes along, takes the original video, takes the original title, takes the original thumbnail, shoves himself in it, and then re-uploads the entire thing to YouTube with himself in the corner. Not that it matters, he adds 18 minutes of runtime to the original. So most of this video is just him watching a documentary. A few days later, Honeypot is like, you know what? We, we've talked it over, the whole team, the company, or everyone who worked on it. We would prefer if you, like, didn't have our entire documentary on your YouTube channel. So can you, like, take it down? This enrages Theo. So he goes on a Twitter tirade. Despite turning off monetization, linking to the original channel and video, and promoting the hell out of the Honey Potio React documentary, they are making me take down my reaction vid. Here's what they say. We appreciate that content creation is no easy task. However, after talking with the rest of our team and our management, we would kindly ask you to remove the video from your channel. Perfectly fine response. I would kindly request that anyone who understands how the internet works refuse to work with Honey Potio in the future. They have made vague threats to DMCA me through us for re-uploading their entire documentary. They spent over a year on, and they did nothing more than watch. I even gave them the pinned comments, the benevolence. Theo always made sure to add Honey Potio to maximize the harassment that they received in the comments, of which between his dozen tweets, there were hundreds. I would be asleep, but I'm legit so pissed. He started to mute the replies of Honeypot, explaining why they did this. Honeypot has been terrible to me by not letting him re-upload the entirety of their documentary that they spent over a year on. So I'm not letting them use my replies as a platform. They can make whatever public statement they want, but they're not doing it here. Just so we're clear, Theo has like five times the followers. He was literally just punching down on a smaller Twitter account and then hiding their replies so they can't get their voice heard. You didn't let me use your content, so I'm not letting you use my platform. So this is what Honeypot said to Theo. Hello to this thread. While we're super grateful for the support and we have no issues with reaction videos, we felt it wasn't right for the entire documentary to be shared as it was initially. The reaction video initially had ads and not much credit was given to the creator. For transparency, here's the initial request we sent. The documentary has since been delisted, and we appreciate Theo respecting our request. Please share your thoughts here, or feel free to contact us if you have anything you would like to add to the discussion. So, perfectly cordial. Ida, when communicating with Theo, says, I've been working on this documentary for the better part of a year. It doesn't feel right that you're using it in its entirety like that, especially to make ad money. Also, I saw you cut out the credits at the end. Any chance you can link to the documentary as an end screen instead? Thanks. Just like, hey, can you just like not re-upload our entire documentary? That's all we're asking. And Theo's just fluffing at the mouth on Twitter. Attacking, blocking, preventing them from saying why they did what they did. I respected their request. I don't respect them for making it. Understand, Theo's hatred and attacking of Honeypot was exclusively because they didn't know how to respond and were confused as to what to do when he stole a year's worth of their work. So I tweeted something else. Dude re-uploaded an entire documentary with himself reacting in the corner the same day it was released. The team who spent months making it told him to take it down. He's now enraged, believing it is transformative and fair use. He demands no one work with the original creator. So Theo saw my tweet and he responded to it. That is literally not what happened. I reacted on stream out of public demand. 
uploaded the VOD that night, had good relations with the team, was asked to make changes and did, and then got vague threats. The team used to be friends. They no longer are. They were friends until the very moment Theo couldn't use them for free content. That's not friendship. That's an abusive relationship. The second Honeypot wasn't useful to Theo, attacking on Twitter, dogpiling. No one work with these people. I don't know why you're harassing me in a weird moment where I was fucked over, but go off, I guess. To be clear, the so-called harassment he's referring to here is the exactly one quote tweet that I read before. The only reason this came to my attention was because he started to attack them on Twitter. And people in Theo's comments were like, oh, I'm never gonna watch the original documentary now. How dare they? The backlash against Honeypot was extreme. So extreme, in fact, that I received this email all the way back then. Hi, Dark Viper AU. I'm the filmmaker from Honeypot who made the React documentary, which became the pinnacle of this whole Theo reaction drama. I just wanted to say a big thank you from me and our team for sharing your support and putting focus on this whole fair use topic. We really appreciate it. We're trying to stay out of this whole debacle to not instigate further, but I just wanted to make sure you know that we see you and we are thankful. I also want to say that you have some really nice followers who've been commenting on the video and sharing their support. Really shows what a nice community you have built and I hope you're proud of the impact you're having. The you actually came up a week later in a ramble where I was talking about how much can we really know anyone else. The ramble was actually quite long, but I'll try and cut it down. Being a creator can be so weird, man. People only see 10 minutes of highly edited footage of you, then form an image in their head about you. Some people decide they love you, some hate you, but none of them actually have a clue what you're really like. So I've said this before, but eventually I came to realize that this is just life. It is debatable to what degree anyone really knows anyone else. It's debatable what degree, to what degree you even know yourself due to the inherent bias in that you want to perceive yourself in a particular way. You want to perceive your actions in a particular way in, in relation to your own emotional needs and whatnot. It's understanding people is hard. Like as a rule, you recognize that you should just give people more credit. When you meet a person and if they're acting poorly or whatever, you should be like, well, you know, I don't really know them. Maybe they're having a bad day. Like you should wait for a lot of information before judging a person, but, you, but it's so hard to do that. Like that Theo person we just talked about before, multiple tweets coming off as a massive tool, entitled, petulance, maybe he was having a bad day. Maybe there's some underlying information that I don't know. Maybe he isn't as bad a guy as he came across in those tweets. It was just one day of his life and I'll never know. I would say a lot of people think you're a tool map because of your stance on the reaction content, even though you are a good person. I often ask people, every drama that I've been involved in, what motivated me to get involved? And it's usually a belief that someone has been treated unfairly, that there's some injustice happening, where someone is being taken advantage of. As I've said to many people, we each have conflicting motivations. I am a person who strongly wants to keep my head down and to not cause people to focus on me personally, which may be weird for you to hear from a YouTuber, but I like people focusing on my work rather than me personally. And the other thing I'm motivated to do is to call out things I see as unfair, unjust, when I believe people are being taken advantage of. And these things will often butt heads in really strange ways. I later found out that my initial negative assessment of Theo was correct, as we'll see later. The next time Theo came up was a few months later at the end of May. In this section, I ultimately speak on why combating the Theos of the world is very hard. In that recent event with Theo, there was a person who refused to understand what Theo did wrong, and so was looking for any potential reason to be able to dismiss me or to spread information that was negative about me. So they would Google my name, and maybe some negative word, and then they would just uncritically believe everything that they've seen on live stream fails or any negative post about me ever made. And it is somewhat frustrating that that will always be something that people can do. I can make direct refutations to all this sort of material. I can make dedicated videos to it. I explain to you guys or everything wrong with their reasoning or how things are directly false or the context around certain things that doesn't make it look as bad. You guys will be like, oh, I understand and no one in the future will care. <laughs> there will still be those people who hate me regardless, who will never see that material, and all the people who will be motivated to hate me anyway, who will just Google and uncritically accept that stuff that I'll refute. It just doesn't matter. It's just something you have to deal with. Just think of them as random internet people. Yeah, you, you kind of have to detach yourself from it and, and understand that like, if you met them in real life and had a conversation, probably just be normal, regular people. People do, to some degree, like dehumanize content creators. Or maybe even just expect that you'll just, just take it. It's a crazy world we live in, and uh, I exist in a crazy part of it. So a few months later in September, Theo popped up into my life again when one of his viewers DMs me about him talking about me on stream. 
Unfortunately, the link to the footage is now dead and I didn't show it at the time, I just talked about the transcripts. His VODs were locked to paid subscribers at the time, although this one small clip does remain because it was uploaded to Discord. Metallica is the dark viper of music. They've done nothing relevant for 25 years and they're mad at you for it. Metallica was like the first reaction content hater. Again, while I do just discuss the transcript of what he said in this following section, in later sections I do show Theo saying many of these same things. I just wanted to include this section to show that this is a pattern of behavior. Obviously, due to my reach, people do tell me, traditionally, when people start mouthing off about me. I don't want to show the clip. What he said, this quote, is goddamn hilarious. And there's that fucking, um, God. I can't remember his name. Dark Viper. The worst. God. There's no person who is complaining about problems that he's actually causing more than I can imagine. His channel washed up. He's a shit GTA streamer that no one gives a fuck about anymore. So rather than reflect and say, hey, I need to change my content style and strategy and do something people resonate with, he starts complaining that reaction YouTubers are why his channel is falling apart. No, that's not how that works. Yeah, and I'm sure he's gonna clip that and make another video with his fucking 2 million subscribers where he gets 30k views on a video max. He's, he's like unwell, like super unhinged. Yeah, Dark Viper, I don't want to start drama. I'm just, I'm just pointing out that drama content is easy and free. Every single time this topic comes up, part of the reason why I'm referencing this, this always happens. Where people don't look at my analytics, don't look at how well I'm doing, and just start mouthing off that I must be washed up. Otherwise, why would I care about other people? Like, obviously, I have talked about this for four, like four years now. When my channel was smaller, when it was at its peak, when it, when, when it was a little bit smaller, when it was as it is now, like, it's probably the peak it is again. And you just can't escape from this because people don't want to accept that you have a legitimate reason, a legitimate, legitimate grievance, and would have to spend the time and effort to understand what you're saying. And so as I've said many times in Rebels, people look for an out, a way to shut down their brain and just dismiss out of hand what a person is saying, to find a way to not critically analyze the claims being made and to just move on. Whether it be a person's shirt, their eye color, their skin color, their political affiliations, it's just, they have that thing, they're done. And so in, so Theo has now made up this narrative where me right now being potentially the most successful I've ever been, he doesn't need to look at my analytics. He doesn't need to look how I'm going. He's just like, I, 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 if he's not doing well, then I can just dismiss him out of hand. And if this guy se sincerely thinks writing a script for an, a video that goes from an hour and a half to two hours or whatever is easy, that probably explains why he was willing to rip off an entire documentary and re-upload it to his YouTube channel. What well, these fucking documentary makers? They couldn't have spent a year on that documentary. They probably spent like 15 minutes. Highly edited, scripted uh, content. It's just an easy thing that you can just throw out. But yeah, I guess these uh, sort of statements will never go away. The sad thing about it is though, chat, eventually such people will be right. Eventually, I will have to start to fall off. Eventually, my channel will have to start to slow down. I know I will have these claims made at every point of my career, irrespective of how well I am doing. But eventually I will start to decline. And it is going to feel a little bit more real when people say that, you know. Even though I know they're just being disingenuous and don't really look at anything. It shouldn't probably be a motivating factor for me to continue to want to do well so that I can t continue to laugh at these people and how ignorant they are. But it, there's a little bit of that there. As long as I keep doing better than I was before, I can be like, ha, huh, you're wrong, <laughs> you're dumb. You're emotionally compromised. You cannot perceive reality correctly. You can't see the most obvious thing in front of your face. You can't even bother to look up something for even 10 seconds before speaking. And I can do that for certain. Always remember chat, just because you don't find something important and you don't personally follow something, doesn't mean that it isn't important and popular elsewhere. And finally, we are here in March 2024, where Theo is again mouthing off in his live stream. However, this time, we get some insight into how he remembers things that happened a year ago when a viewer asked him about watching a video on stream. As Theo speaks, and I show what actually happened, I want you to question how much he actually believes what he's saying. Uh, I, I thought it was a video recommendation isn't something I should do a video about, not a video I should watch. I don't really watch other people's videos live. I just don't. Nothing I do is because of potential for Dark Viper. It's not a format of content that I like as much. Comments he made a year ago do suggest that at least part of the reason why he avoids reaction content is because of his experience with me. Of the over 170 videos I've published in the last year, two are reactions, I'll never make a reaction video again. 
I learned my lesson. I swear to never do a reaction video again. He affirmed this promise in an email as well. I, I much prefer the reading and diving into multiple contexts all over the place thing where with, with videos, I find that when I'm reacting to somebody's video, the quality of my video is limited by the quality of theirs. And like, no offense to most creators, but my videos are better than theirs. So reacting to their videos is just dragging down the quality of mine. And it's a balance that I specifically try to find. So that's the main reason why I don't do it. I mean, can you blame me for thinking that it's Theo's excessive pride that prevents him from understanding that he was at fault all the way back then when we first interacted? And it sucks that like the one time I reacted to a quality thing and I like actually added a lot of insight to it, the company that did it were fucking assholes to me for no reason. The original documentary was one hour and 18 minutes, while Theo's re-upload was an hour and 36 minutes, only an 18 minute difference, and I believe this was unedited. There is no evidence of Honeypot ever treating Theo poorly, despite his not including them in the title, removing the credits from the video, and re-uploading their video entirely for revenue. To this day, have never had a company treat me so shitty, and I've had some companies treat me really fucking shitty. They like, dragged me along for two weeks, having me make a bunch of changes to a video I'd already published. The original documentary released February 11th, 2023, Theo reacted to the video five hours later, and then and immediately made it available on his channel, so we can assume it was around February 12th that it was on his channel. His attacking them on Twitter occurred February 15th, so it's more like three days of discussion, not multiple weeks. Their requests occurred seemingly due to their being surprised of Theo's lack of credit in the title, cropping off of the actual credits, and being unaware Theo was going to re-upload the entire video and then monetize it. Theo goes on to talk about how he responded to Honeypot's request for changes when they became aware of his unsolicited reaction video. The whole time I was asking them like, I'll do it, but can we get in a call? I'll do it, but can we get in a call? I'll do it, but can we get in a call? I just wanted to talk to a human and explain like how reaction content and YouTube fucking worked. And they refused to do that no matter what I did, which was so annoying. And uh, I just caved and deleted the video when they told me to. No one is under any obligation to get into a call with a person who re-uploaded their video without permission. It didn't justify Theo attacking them on Twitter, let alone demand that no one work with them again. The staff at Honeypot were harassed, people said they were going to boycott their video that they worked very hard on, and they were clearly very distressed because of the actions of Theo. Even at the time, he didn't feel it necessary to apologize. You do not need to hop into a call to explain that they work for a year, you take all their work, you re-upload it to the YouTube channel, and you make tons of money. Reaction content is a very simple thing. They do all the work, you do no work, and get all the money. You can explain that in a few words in an email. And then tweeted about it because I was pissed at them. And people got mad at me because this random fucking asshole schizophrenic dude from Australia who's been a washed up GTA streamer for like five years now decided that reaction content's why nobody watches his stuff and decided to make me the target of his two million subscriber audience when I had 20k subs. And I would have gotten away with harassing them and deleting their messages if it wasn't for those damn Australians. Still, he will never take accountability. My channel only really started to take off five years ago and I have since received well over a billion views. I'm not sure how you could call that washed up. Obviously, not only do people watch my stuff, but I have fought against React content every stage of my career, regardless of how successful I have been. Theo, of course, didn't have 20k subs. He had 100,000 subs and received views on his videos comparable to my Ramble series in which he featured. I also have never had 2 million subscribers, not a year ago or now. Perhaps you've noticed the political tactic that Theo is engaging in here. Theo paradoxically presents his enemies as both being fiercely strong, but also extremely weak. That Dark Viper AU was washed. No one has ever watched him. Never had an audience. He's pathetic. That's why he's always complaining about React content. But by the way, two million strong did he throw at me? Little bitty me. So yeah, uh, fuck the company that let that happen. Fuck Dark Viper. None of that is why I don't do reaction content. That is just people who are awful that I refuse to interact with or associate myself with in any way. Refuse to interact with? You sent me like half a dozen emails of which I didn't respond. I am not asking to interact with you. You're acting like you're refusing something. You don't have a choice. You have no ability to interact with me or Honeypot for that matter. I don't want to interact with you. Honeypot doesn't want to interact with you, but you keep mentioning us on your stream. If you don't want to interact with me, stop lying about me. It's that easy. Accept that you fucked up and move on. We all do it sometimes. Dark Viper's about to get canceled so hard too. It's gonna be really entertaining. Um, yeah, he, he's been suing smaller creators now, which is really fun and specifically got shut down by YouTube so hard that he hired more lawyers to go after them. He's just fucking insane, like actually insane. So obviously none of that is true. Theo, this is what happens when you use someone named Chud Logic as your main source of information. To be clear, this is who Theo is holding up as his champion and apparently where Theo gets his understanding of me from. People think he's an obsessed schizo. I mean, I'd never speak to this freak. There's no fucking way. He's a despicable, pretentious c want nothing to do with it. Loser. He's a fucking loser. He's pathetic. He's a pathetic little fucking wretch as far as I'm concerned. Wait, what? What does that mean? 
I don't even understand what he means by that. What difference does that make? How is that a different thing? I don't understand the difference. Why does that make a difference? But yeah, no, he's a fucking despicable little c I really dislike this guy. I think he's a piece of shit. Yeah, I don't know. I just think he's a little rat. He's just got this like autistic obsession. It's obviously long because this guy's an autistic freak. This guy is a little autistic freak who types out essays in DMs. He's extremely pretentious. What, what an autistic little unlikable freak he is. It's not just Chad Logic, it's a whole gang of people that apparently Theo thinks are like legitimate sources of information. His hero is about to take on the big bad Dark Viper EU. Dark Viper EU, the most pathetic specimen that he is. Dark Viper has a level of autism slash schizo energy that concerns me. Dark Viper AU is a total degenerate loser. Zero talent, whines constantly, will engage in mass flagging and DMCA to shut down his critics. This dude is a total fucking lol cow if Nick responds true, laughing my ass off. Tr Absolutely pathetic cretin. The last Laughing my fucking ass off. What a joke. I don't know, bro. Ask YouTube. LOL. LOL. Dude is a total scumbag. He should get on a call with Chud and hash this thing out like an adult. Don't Chud Logic then sees this picture and tweets it out himself with the caption. Very sad to hear Dark Viper AU is currently undergoing tests for gay turbo aids. Nick responds, true, laughing my ass off. Is it true you put on a t-shirt in response to me calling you a vest wearing bitch homosexual? Chud Logic then makes a slightly more serious response when he shares this clip and says, cope homo nonsense and shares a tweet of dark viper au with the caption dark viper in literal tears after watching some gay fan video on reddit i am not joking <laughs> he then adds dark viper and says bro i had no idea what a pathetic sad sack dark viper is i'm about to cut a mountain of videos on this freak I can't believe Theo was watching his favorite small creator, Chad Logic, and he didn't even send me a message to wish me a speedy recovery from my gay turbo aids. So this is his team of Avengers, some weird wacko 4chan group or something. These are the guys that Theo thinks are coming to cancel me. I mean, Theo has said that he used to hang out on 4chan, so maybe he is just another Chad Logic. To state the obvious, I am not suing anyone, let alone YouTube. In fact, I never sought or had any interest in suing YouTube. Chad Logic is just not a lawyer and can barely read, which I'm surprised Theo didn't pick up on. As I covered in this video, I merely had an issue with YouTube's automatic bot run copyright system that required me to seek representation to submit forms. This all happened four months ago, but YouTube's fuck up caused them to not read the claim. It is certainly an interesting story, but I'm obviously not getting canceled for YouTube screw up. Yeah, it's like, like it's funny because the, the issues people state with reaction content are that it hurts smaller creators, it's low effort, and it, yeah, it's really just those two. It's, it hurts smaller creators because it's stealing from them, and it's low effort. If Those are the two critiques of reaction content. Does anybody have a different critique that I'm not acknowledging here? Is it fair to say those are the two reasons that people don't like reaction content? Because it steals, and because it, like, is low, or because it steals slash is low effort, and it hurts smaller creators. Do we agree with that? Are there any other arguments that I'm missing here before I go forward? This is about reaction content. People recording themselves reacting to other people's videos and publishing it. Does anyone have a, an argument against it that isn't one of these two? Many people, perhaps even most people, are just like Theo. They just don't care, and nothing is going to make them care. It doesn't matter how much I write, how much I explain, how strong my arguments are. If they won't engage with the material, I may as well be on another planet. I am Theo's public enemy number one. But rather than studying me and my work to take me down, show me how I'm wrong, he'd rather live in ignorance, because ignorance is safe. The more ignorant he is, the more convincing his lies seem even to himself. If you keep yourself ignorant, you won't learn things that might make you unhappy, or require you to change and instead you can believe what any random goofball on Twitter says. Can you imagine the mental gymnastics that he would have to employ to believe that I talked about those two things in my entire series for six hours? I also don't think low effort content is inherently bad, but I'm not gonna rehash my entire series in this video. The reason why I bring this up in the first place is because do you know what is worse in both of those ways? Both it hurts smaller creators more, and it's lower effort. Because there's one type of content that is worse in both of those ways. Do you know what it is? drama content when people are assholes for no goddamn reason like i don't know this dark viper dude whose favorite thing is going after anyone who ever accidentally opened a youtube video on their channel am i a gt5 channel or am i a drama channel please pick one so clearly i'm not a drama channel and the videos i've made specifically about reaction content have been some of the most effable that i've made my scripts alone account for 200 pages of writing and those videos did cost thousands of dollars to make 
No one in their right minds would think drama channels are particularly impacting smaller creators. They don't even make videos on smaller creators. But the wider world outside of Theo doesn't matter to him. He is under the delusion that he should be able to attack and harass whoever he wishes. He therefore views any attempts to try to stop that as the worst conceivable thing. In Theo's world, if it's negatively impacting Theo, then it's bad. If it's not impacting Theo, then it doesn't matter. When he says that I go after anyone who accidentally opened a YouTube video, I can't tell if he's speaking of himself, stealing a year's worth of work. I reacted on stream out of public demand. The multi-million dollar content farms at the focus of my series or Chad Logic re-uploading my entire video to his channel. Um, I wanted to watch this because apparently this video is very funny. So I guess we'll, I guess we'll see. Let's watch this video. So it's, am I jealous of Jack's film's success with credit the creators? It honestly doesn't matter because he's obviously lying either way. The few channels I've reacted to the content of have all thanked me endlessly. I love reacting to people's stuff if it's a way that I can funnel people to their content, their work, their audience, all of those things. It's great. I don't really watch other people's videos live. I just don't. It's not a format of content that I like as much. I find that when I'm reacting to somebody's video, the quality of my video is limited by the quality of theirs. And like, no offense to most creators, but my videos are better than theirs. So reacting to their videos is just dragging down the quality of mine. And it's a balance that I specifically try to find. So that's the main reason why I don't do it. So yeah, I, I think basically every argument against reaction content is kind of bullshit. Yeah, well, I think the arguments for transformation theory in quantum mechanics is also bullshit. I don't know anything about it, but it's bullshit. You see, I too can make declarative statements about things that I do not really understand. Yes, the Dark Viper video, or sorry, the Moist Critical video is great. There's more about Dark Viper coming out sound, er, soon now too. It's weird for a person to call a video great that the creator themselves said was bad and that they apologize for. Today's breakfast, the champions that I'll be feasting on is some cereal with L's. I got the biblical smackdown laid on me by a YouTuber and it's time to talk about it. So yeah, again, he had every right to dunk on me for the things I got wrong. Uh, overall, I think this has been a pretty eye-opening experience, and I feel like I've learned a lot. Hello and welcome to another episode of GTA Guesser Versus with my special guest, Moist Critical. Hey, hey. <laughs> I'm hoping I don't embarrass myself too badly. I was practicing for the last hour and a half, so... But you see, the difference is, Charlie's a good person. Who was just wrong? Theo is a delusional douchebag. Yeah, the, the drama shit's unreal, and I, I, I hate it so much. And the fact that, like, drama baiters are complaining about people who, like, watch videos by their friends is just absurd to me. It's actually fucking absurd to me. See? Delusional. So prior experience has taught me that while Theo is perfectly willing to harass others, whenever he's criticized for things he's done, legitimate bad things he's done, he will cry harassment every single time. Of course, I would say something like, don't go harass Theo, it just makes me look bad. But I don't need to say that, right? Because I don't have an audience. No one's gonna watch this video. I'm washed. I also want to say that you have some really nice followers who've been commenting on the video and sharing their support. Really shows what a nice community you have built, and I hope you're proud of the impact you're having. Do you think Theo's ever gonna wake up and realize that he's just an asshole? Like he is actually the villain in this story? You wonder how bad people can justify bad things to themselves. You just need to look at Theo.